Hi, welcome back to West Coast Geeks. I'm your host, Joaquin. How we doing, people? You know who's with me. Hey, what's up, guys? Right, my boy, Eric. So today's video is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, non-spoiler review, G2, The Glacial Rift of the Frost Giant, Jar, Jar, right? It's like the J's, like the R. <laughs> so, Jarl, it's Yarl. Y. The giant Jarl. Yarl. So, um, we're going to, like, this is going to be an ongoing series where I do the non-spoiler review with Eric, and then we're going to get to D1, and um, once we start doing that, we're going to get more in-depth on the underground, or the underworld, because that's when Advanced Dungeons and Dragons spurts dealt with it. And so, again, it will be a non-spoiler review, but we'll be able to talk about the, the monsters that they used, some of the monsters that they used in there. And there's a reason why they were all close together, even though some people don't like that. Deal with it. It's in the module. All right. <laughs> <laughs> or take it out, dude. I don't know why you're bitching. Oh, God. I'm going to get start a rant. <laughs> all right. Do it. <laughs> no, I don't want to. All right. So um, for those of you who have played through G2, I found this nice little uh, cartoon illustration of possible encounters, and I thought it would just be a fun way to um, start the video. And so, on with the show, people. All right, G2, the glacial, the glacial rift of the Frost Giant Jar, once again. Mm. I forgot to put in the rift of the Frost Giant Jar. Rift I of the, it. I just have the glacial of the Frost Giant Jar. Dyslexic hey, people. All right. <laughs> it happens. All right. So, this is the second module in the series in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. This is the first rules for cold and ice in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And, and this is the tournament module. So, the player's handbook still hasn't came out yet. Still. I, I want to say it still hasn't came out yet. Or maybe it did right after or during this. But, um,. These these tournament modules, what I think what they were doing was playtesting. These were the early playtest for um, the player's handbook, but it wasn't a playtest in the sense of mm. we'll, we'll correct anything. They're just like, let's just see what we have. And so, um, you know, players got to um, play little bits and pieces of what was going to be coming out soon in the player's handbook. Or they just put out player characters and it had nothing to do with the player's handbook. Because I wasn't there. I, this is just what I guess what happened. But I do know <laughs> these were the tournament style. So if anybody do, does know if what I said at first about that, you know, they, they got a small glimpse of what some of the mid-level characters were going to be like in abilities in the player's handbook, please leave a comment below. That way I know these things. And then I can tell other people, and they will know these. So, um, they continued the adventure. So after they defeated the hill giants, or died, um, they were then given a. They were shown a map, or they could be uh, teleported there. So, th because this was a tournament, um, they teleported you there, and so, um. If you didn't, and you're just writing this as an ongoing campaign, they started introducing, like like I said, the snow rules and stuff. But this is the background that they gave you for um, running the, um, the module. Some dozens of leagues to the north and west of the setting of the Hill Giant, which is weird because when they eventually... Um, Put this module into the Greyhawk. You're actually going south. Still going. Yeah. You're still. You're going like. Still going. Like you're not even going southwest or east. You're going south. And so, um, when we get into the map, so I'll, I'll explain that a little bit well, more. It just, it just shows that this this module came out before Greyhawk. Yeah. This this module came out before the map. So they were just like you know in your world. This is how it goes. Some dozen of leagues to the north and west of the setting of the Hill Giant Sheep, module G1 of the series. Amidst the tallest mountain is the stronghold of um, Grugner, Lord of the Frost Giant. 
If Frost Giants have been among those who have been in the reaving bands, the party is to deal with as the Hail Giants have dealt with. Wow. Should have let um, uh, spell check read do that. Spell check proof read. Yep. No, that's from that's from that's from there. I, I grabbed a copy of it. That's how it reads. Really? Yeah. So I said, we know man. how they like to write their books. Yep. Back in the day, people. Or spell check. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If, before a uh, word, basically. Deaths right. and destruction are to be uh, met out to the Frost Giants in the same measure they have gave to the people below. Those members of the party who participate in the raid upon the steading will know that most that their most important mission, however, is to garner intelligence as to what or who is behind the unholy alliance of the Hill, Stone, Frost, and possibly other types of giants as well. As self such information gained is to be delivered by the fastest means to the noble sponsoring the expedition. While the party is to follow up on clues order to prosecute the offenders, any treasure taken is kept by the party, which is weird how they how they put those in the early modules. Like can you imagine telling that it's like, yeah, you gotta you gotta give the the, the country half your treasure. Right. <laughs> this is We're their like, reward no. for the peril they must face. Back. Yeah, and they are bound to face many in the weird ice caves and rocky caverns of the Yarl. The evil root is deep grown here, deeply grown here, far worse than among the hill giants. And so, um, the threat level's going up, people. Like, this, this module was like no joke. I... The first time I played this module, I got killed by a frost giant yeah. within the first couple of rooms. No joke. Maybe three. Three encounters. I'm dead. Uh, I was not a happy camper at the age of like nine or ten, something like that. I'll hey, tell you that. Baby man. Joaquin. And I was not happy at that. And I already told that story because I had to wait 30 minutes or maybe it was a little bit shorter, but felt like it. <laughs> and jump back into the game, man. I'm oh, so pissed. <laughs> All right, so dealing with the elements. First time's rule for snow and ice in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. So I'm going to read this other little clip. Because um, at the start, they do give some, like, rules and stuff, and they tell you how to get there. But um got to make this short because we still got to do the um, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons uh, Cleric first level spells, and that will be dropped uh, next mm. week, people. All right. The whole place is windy and very cold. Visibility atop of the rift is about 150 feet. The wind at the bottom of the rift is worse still, and visibility there is only 30 feet, people. The floor of the rift is a maze of snow and ice. Um... Ice, yeah, ice and mounds, which peaks of ice and rocks thrusting up here and there like fangs. Movement through the howling maze of cold is reduced by 50% due to wind force. So it's kind of like, you know, um, your, your, your movement is just cut in half. So if your movement's cut in half to 15, now try running. <laughs> Can't get that far. Uh, due to the wind forces and um, levitation or flying, there will, will cause movement in a random direction equal to one half the distance flown at levitated. Use a, a D8 to determine north, northeast, southeast, etc. You imagine that? I try to fly, get away, and you end up flying back it straight into the frost giants. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I use that. I use that. Um, Lance was a, he ran a fairy character. Yeah. The flu in my Icewind Dale campaign. I'm like, yeah, you get blown you get blown back into the ground. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean those are things that which made this this module a little bit um which mm -hmm. not a little bit, that made it difficult. And for the DMs who enforce these rules, the party had to adapt quickly to fighting and movement. And the last part is uh the map the party has shown only the entrance to the rift, and they have no idea as to which path they should follow or what they will encounter other than certainly of frost giants. Other than a few traces of giant footsteps, the ice and wind-driven snow 
hides all traces of who or what used the legends to gain access to the caves. The party Thank must you. learn from themselves what lies in store. And um, just like before, they have they give you the notes for the for the DM. Mm -hmm. uh, they they give some more notes about the upper and lower caverns, and of course they give you the um, giant bag content. And then um, this module is only eight pages long. Because nobody makes it, and they all die. I was just like, I was I always thought this was like longer, but you know, eight pages, man. That's like, damn, dude. Give me a little bit more fluff. So I'm hoping like uh, Goodman's Games, I hope, you know, when they do the o OSR series or OAR series, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I hope they touch on this because I would like to see a little bit more uh, background in or fleshing out this module more. I mean, as a DM, you're supposed to, but man, I don't want to put it in that kind of work. All right. <laughs> Players can find unique places to explore. And so um, this is the riff. So this is what you're going into that you uh, see on the left. And um, uh -huh. so, yeah, like this, this adventure is just crazy because um, missile weapons, their range is cut in half. And in some cases, they're like, you know, negative four or five or six penalties to hit. Because if the DM decides that the wind's really blowing, and here's the thing, uh, when the Giants throw their missiles, they're not really affected by it. <laughs> so think they're about that. It. If they pick up a giant stone, it's going to be very rare that the wind's going to be able to kick up that much with right. the force they're putting behind it to deviate. It's not going to blow around a giant boulder. Yeah, or if they shoot a giant crossbow or whatever, uh, or throw a dagger. You know, but for the humans and all that, shooting bows and crossbows, yeah. And then your your visibility has been cut down. That's the crazy part, because you're going to feel a sense of... Once you get in the middle of this adventure, you, as a DM, you should try to impose, like, a feeling of, like, not necessarily helplessness, but they know that wherever they're at, it's they're in the thick of it now because mm -hmm. they can't really see ahead of them or behind them. Now, Eric, have you ever been in really thick fog as you're driving and you're supposed to slow down to about 20 to 25 miles an hour? Um, I got caught in a hailstorm outside of Zion one time driving back from Salt Lake City. Yeah, we were all doing like 10, 15 miles an hour. Yeah, well, fog, because I used to live up in Seattle, it would yeah. get so foggy when you were driving. it. Even like a few times when I was down here in L.A., when I was living down here for a moment. San Francisco's back in, pretty bad, too. Yeah, every now and then you'll get some fog that comes in. And I remember I, I was like, I don't know, I must have been like about 21. And um, they couldn't see with the fog coming in. Like, mm -hmm. what am I supposed to do? And then somebody goes, well, just drive 10 miles an hour. And then I remember what my uncle told me. He's like, no, don't, don't drive 10. You want to drive at least about 20 yeah. because you're People going. People coming in to see you. Yeah, you're going fast enough where um, if somebody's speeding or going or like going really fast, when they hit you, they're not hitting you as like an object that's barely moving because then the impact's going to be greater. And at 20 miles an hour, You'll start to see, hopefully, the headlights of somebody who's, like, breaking or doing whatever. Um, and you won't hit, you won't crash into them that hard. So, I was like, just keep it around 15 to 20, you know, and, and, and that's how we did it. And I go, and shut everything off, so we turned off the radio. And then um, I told my friends, now, everybody shut the hell up. And let, and we had the windows down, and I go, and just listen. And we could hear cars in front of us and in back of us. That's how we gauged through. And it was like, no joke, like 10 minutes of driving through that, dick, that thick of a fog. I should edit out when I said dick, but <laughs> I was like, no. 
it ain't gonna do nothing. It's only the first five minutes. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I had to have this conversation with Eric. I go, you need to watch your cuffing. I'm talking about dick fog. <laughs> like, what the hell is that? Right. What dick fog? <laughs> dick. E H I. Oh. So, um, saying. yeah, because I thought I said, I meant to say thick, but I said the, uh, I said dick. And so, um, we have a little <laughs> Beavis and Butthead moment there. And so, that's how you're going to be playing this adventure as a DM. And honestly, if you do not enforce the, um, movement and the visibility and the high wind and all that, you're really just doing a disservice to your players when they say, I went and survived through this adventure. Because it's supposed to be tough. Uh, you get to find um, unique locations like this where they have like, you know, artwork that the Frost Giants have made and they show their history. And, you know, when you get there, you'll be able to look at that. Um. Again, just like the Hill Giants, but the Frost Giants are even worse. Choose your fights carefully. There are many encounters that will TPK your group. And the DMs are giving rules on combat tactics in here. And so um, the only good thing that you're going to figure out as you play is that the sound doesn't carry as far because of the high wind and everything else. And the way that the adventure is carved into the uh, mountains and stuff, that um, anything, any fight that you're going to be in, either you're not going to hear reinforcements coming until they get really close, or you, the fighting is not going to be spread out. Like in, you know, like in the Hill Giants, you get into a big fight that lasts more than three or four rounds in combat, someone's going to hear it. You know, mm. and in this adventure, that's like the only plus side where, you know, you can take advantage of being isolated in the area and not worry about, you know, um, other other uh, frost giants, other creatures hearing your combat in certain areas. And there's also there's a lot of frost giants in here. I'm not I'm, I mean, there must be like, I don't know, 50 frost giants, something like that. Hmm. That's a lot. But it's only eight pages. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, you're dead. Um, the G2 location, the Greyhawk map, so the Crystal Mountains. So um, you see where it says the Yolton? So Yolton? the Crystal Mountain, yeah, the Yoltons. Um, the Crystal Mist Mountains goes further south and actually heads up into the, um, into the Hell Furnace. And that's where G3 takes place. So instead of going north, you're actually, this is what, what I was talking about, you're going to be going south. And I will be doing, like I said before, um, separate videos on um, the Yeoman Tree and um, Jolton Mountain, the Yolton Mountain, Crystal Mist Mountains, and the Hell Furnace. These will be on the days that um, Eric can't join me. Don't curse my video, Eric, like you did last Yo, time. I will. Just wait. <laughs> you had it not. And so um, these little maps right here, just, you know, with the Darlene map, if you have that. Um, but if not, you can just go online and find these. Um, again, these, these maps are great because you could just take this map and make just make whatever adventure you want. And you can have the party characters start off in the capital that you a couple of different locations and just take it from there. So um, your party needs to be equipped with snow gear. And the player's handbook doesn't really deal with that. So you will be suffering other effects too. Unless you find a way to protect yourself from the cold. Okay, All right. Okay. The wrap up. So the Hall of the Fire Giant King, that's the next up in this three-part series of the modules, the Hall of Giant King Fire. The Hall of the Fire Giant King and um, the threat level gets raised even higher. Like, it is no joke what the DM's notes are in the um, Fire Giant King. And I will go over, like, somewhat, glance over a few of, the, a few of those. But um, think of, who is the, uh, the karate instructor for uh, yeah, Cobra he... Kai? Oh, I don't remember him. Yeah, but if we all know who he is. Just don't remember his name. 
But yeah. um, when he tells he tells Johnny to sweep the leg, that's what the <laughs> that's what this module is giving you as a DM provision. Sweep the leg, and so it's, it's this is brutal. Like in here, you go in and you realize at a certain point that just like G two, once you're in, you're in. And you, at that point, you're showing no mercy. You are fighting for your lives, and you realize that you don't have the time to really investigate like you did with G1, where you had opportunities to somewhat sneak around. Um, G3 does not give you any of that. And also, um, by the time the player characters make it to the Fire Giant King, Word has already passed up that the hill giants have been taken down and then the frost giants have been taken down. So they're already on alert. So you're going into this mountain fortress and you're not going to catch them like sleeping or throwing a party or anything like that. Like, you know, this is like... Not taking a nap. Yeah, nap time. yeah. Now, now you ain't going to find any of that. And so, um, and that's where they introduce the drow, which we'll get into more once we get there. So, um, like I said, we just—I just wanted to do a short series because my goal is to get into D one. And once we get into D one, that's when we're really going to go into the rules of the Underdark that they gave out. We're going to explain more of all the creatures that you found in that module up to a point, and. Um, as a DM, like, what can you do with that? And, you know, where where can you take that module and make it your own? And we'll get into more of that when we get there. But, um, so G2, you said you went through the Giants, didn't you? Oh, I did not. You didn't go through any, like, any, like, not, not even the Queen of the Spiders? And not the, you know what, I might have, but it's so long ago. I don't remember a whole lot of it. Yeah. So, um, if the DM, a lot of my youth that was in the in the haze yeah. back then. <laughs> um, this is why you watch our video on henchmen and followers, people, and take our tips, because in these uh, these modules, you do have henchmen and followers for a reason, because mm -hmm. you're gonna need them. You're gonna need a backup cleric. You might need a backup spellcaster. Secondary fighter, you know, and if you don't have these, then you're going to be in a world of pain on these adventures. Um, these modules were kind of set where either the party, if they went in just at the right levels, found these very challenging, or if they went in like starting off after like 10th or 12th, with like you know, against the giants, they just walked in against, I mean, um setting up the hill giant chief and once they got in there it was just repeated fireballs and then you know your fighter with a vorpal sword and um it's plus five to hit and whatever with all the other abilities and casting haste mm -hmm. just you know just work through all the giants they're like next and then they gain more levels and they they roll over the frost giants so by the time they get to the fire giants it gives them a little bit of a speed bump but it's not until they get really to um, the Vault of the Drow do they really feel challenged. And then after that is the uh, Queen of the Spiderwebs. So, oh, yeah. All right. So any questions, Eric? No. I'm, I don't want – I'm looking forward to seeing how this uh, – because you said we may go through this at one point, Oh, you right? – you, well, after this video, though, we are going to talk about that because um, – Oh, shit. Well, because for the campaign, you had picked a character. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm gonna say that to afterwards. All right. So we're hey. at 24 minutes. Leave a comment below. Did you go through against the giant series? Did you enjoy it? Um, what stories do you have to tell? Leave that in the comment below. If you were a DM, you know what was your favorite? Um, what was your favorite part that the characters either had like a great comeback or triumph or did you TPK your party, dude? Which a lot of <laughs> which a lot of DMs, including myself, have done in this series. And it, and it is sad for a second when the party the game just stops. You did and it on purpose. I didn't do it on purpose. 
Yeah, you did. Oh, I did it. I always give my players a chance. You played with me. Mm -hmm. I give you full characters. I give you all. I give you full. Oh, you got a horse? A horse is hamburger meat. <laughs> Cross giant hamburgers. <laughs> Well, you're not gonna be riding horses into the into the uh, mountain. No, they no. especially not gonna go through the adventure like that. I mean, I, I suppose you could try, but I'll make you roll percentage dice to see if your horse slips and falls and breaks his leg. See, that's even worse. Now you gotta put your now you gotta put your horse down. I told you to bring him into the module like that. <laughs> You take mules. You don't be riding horses through the snow mountains. You take giant Clydesdale's horses. Be like, <laughs> well, then I'll be yeah. sure to have the frost giant uh, kill that first, so they can eat it, or they can kill your character instead. Your choice. Yeah. I'll, then I'll come back as a centaur. Be like, now what, bitches? <laughs> They're like best of both worlds. We get treasure right? and we get to eat a horse. Oh, no baby oh, horse. Oh, no baby horse. Yeah. All right, we're gonna leave it at that. Um, baby horse killer. You know, I'm not. Uh, I'm not as vicious as I make myself sound sometimes yeah, as a DM, but I am entertaining. So I'll give you that. You know, you gotta give me that. So with that, Eric, closing words. Make it a centaur. Making a centaur. All right, people. Catch you next video. <laughs> Eric, say bye. Bye.